If you're interested in trying low-level laser therapy or electrotrichogenesis to treat your hair loss, we've made this video for you. You'll find out what these technologies are, what they can do for your hair, and how they stack up against each other. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGuard.com, where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. Guys, just before we get into the video on LLLT or electrotrichogenesis, if you want access to the totally free nutrition plan, then make sure to click the link in the description. You get 21 delicious recipes designed specifically for faster, stronger hair growth. The meals are loaded with nutrients like biotin, zinc, and collagen to make hair as thick and strong as possible. So let's get straight into it. LLLT or ETG. Now these are the two main classes of electrical devices that are used to treat hair loss. I'll briefly go into how these devices work before comparing them. So first let's look at low level laser therapy. The low level part refers to the low power output of these devices. So this is a mild treatment that doesn't cause any damage to the tissues. The low intensity laser stimulates dormant follicles into kickstarting the hair growth cycle. Like most hair loss treatments, LLOT came about by mistake. Scientists in the 1960s were investigating lasers as potential cancer treatments. And they noticed that when you shaved the backs of the mice, lasers made the hair grow back quicker. So over the next few decades, various companies looked into making laser devices for hair loss. Until 2007, a product called the HairMax Laser Comb received FDA clearance as a medical device for male hair loss. This would make it the very first medical device of any kind to achieve this distinction. The company behind HairMax soon released different versions of its comb and other companies soon followed. Now, at this point in time, we don't really understand how any of these devices work. In other words, the biochemical pathway that turns the laser stimulation into more hair. Now, there are various speculations, but they're just exactly that. They are speculations. But whatever the case, it appears that the laser has multiple effects on the hair follicles. A, follicles in the resting phase are prompted to switch back into the growth phase. B, the duration of the growth phase itself is prolonged. And C, the follicle cells proliferate at a greater rate during the growth phase. And this makes for more hair shafts growing at the same time, and therefore increased hair coverage. Now let's have a look at electrodrygogenesis or ETG. This is a similar kind of device to LLT in that it is a low powered, non-invasive and mild, but instead of lasers, it uses electricity to promote hair growth. There have been various kinds of electricity used, but more modern devices use static electricity instead of a continuous current. Short electrostatic pulses that mimic the naturally occurring signals within the body and cause no damage to the tissues. Like with LLLT, the biochemistry isn't clear, but what it does do is very similar. It prompts dormant hair follicles to switch from resting to the growth phase of their cycle and extends the length of time for which the hairs are growing. It also seems to stimulate blood flow to the scalp. So the end result, once again, is increased hair coverage. Next, let's have a look at how these two treatments stack up against each other. The first thing we want to review is the technology itself. So both LLLT and ETG use modalities with a wide range of applications for a whole host of conditions. Now, lasers are obviously used in dermatology for the treatment of skin conditions like hair loss, as well as the removal of various types of lesions. But they're also used to stimulate nerves in various ophthalmology applications like corrective eye surgery, to treat cancer, to deliver drugs, as well as to accelerate wound healing. When it comes to electricity, you have an even wider range of applications. So electrical currents or electrostatic fields are used for the treatment of pain or muscle injuries. They're also used to accelerate the treatment of bony structures, as well as to treat insomnia, depression, and anxiety. Now, as I said, when it comes specifically to hair loss, we don't fully understand how either of these devices work. What we do know is that they do deliver results for many users and that they are safe. That means that there are no side effects and there are no counterindications. The next thing we want to look at are the results. So let's start with LLLT. What kind of results can you expect with that? Now guys, I just want to make it clear that these are not miracle technologies. They will work for some men to stop hair loss and in others they might regrow some hair, but they won't work for everyone. And the data that we have so far shows modest regrowth. And we've been getting a lot of studies coming in over the past few years, meaning that there is a now a sizable amount of evidence that we can assess. 
A 2017 review found five randomized controlled trials that compared treatment with active laser devices to sham devices. Sham devices are the equivalent of a placebo. They're basically devices that look the same as the real deal, but they don't actually do anything. All the studies reported increases in hair density after 16 to 26 weeks. The changes in hair counts were comparable to those obtained with finasteride and minoxidil. Turning to ETG, we have fewer studies to go by, but the results that we have from these studies are impressive. In two studies that took place in Canada in the 1990s, ETG was found to induce dramatic hair regrowth. The first study found that men treated with an ETG device had an astonishing 66% regrowth after 36 weeks compared to only 25% for those who received the sham treatment. These figures are based on hair counts in a 1 inch circular patch in the balding area. The second study was an extension of the first one, where men received treatments for another 30 weeks. With the final result being that the men who received the active treatment from start to finish had an average hair count that went from 82 to 276 hairs, a more than threefold increase. The third factor we're going to look at is variety and cost. In terms of variety, LLOT is clearly ahead. Things have changed a lot since the original Hair Max comb was cleared by the FDA in 2007. Since then, we have had loads of new devices hit the market, first by the same company and then by others. And they seem to be coming out at an accelerating rate. So that now we're getting new models almost every single year. Some of these devices are handheld combs or wands like the Hair Max, but others are much larger and can cover the entire head. Like for example with the full-sized caps which treat the entire head. Many of the devices are literally styled like baseball caps that you can presumably even wear while you're outside the home. With regards to cost, the smaller LLT devices will set you back a few hundred dollars, whereas the large full head ones can retail for over a thousand bucks. The advantage being that this is a one-off cost. There are no parts that need to be replaced. So you simply buy the device once and then with good use, it should last you for many years. Now, when it comes to electro trichogenesis, there is nowhere near that kind of variety. Most devices available for purchase are meant to be used at a professional clinic and not at home. As a result, these devices are large, bulky, and can cost many thousands of dollars. So buying them for yourself and operating them at home is not an option. However, we have released the HairGuard GrowComb. The GrowComb uses ETG technology and it's made specifically for use at home, which means that this technology is now within the reach of many guys out there who otherwise wouldn't be able to afford the expensive clinic visits. Now, the HairGuard GrowComb comes with a 365 day money back guarantee so it's entirely risk-free to try. I'll link you to it in the description. The fourth thing we want to look at is long-term use. So with either type of these devices, you have to allow time to see results. Three months would be the minimum, but if you're gonna start this kind of treatment, we'd suggest that you give it at least six months, if not more. If you find that you're getting results, you can then continue treatment. Usage times and frequencies differ from one device to another, but most device manufacturers recommend either daily or a few times a day. Treatment sessions last for a few minutes to half an hour or more. Now, one issue is that with both technologies, we have limited data on long-term use. In other words, how the scalp's response changes with time. Most studies are limited in duration to six months. Though, as I was saying earlier, we have data on sustained growth with ETG that goes on beyond the first year of use. From the feedback that we got from users of the GrowComb, they get their first results after about three months and continue to maintain their regrowth as long as they continue treatment. So essentially, there's no desensitization or anything like that. Now guys, if you've used the GrowComb or any other ETG or LLT device, we'd love to hear from you in the comments. And if you want to learn more about Will's 8 steps he used to regrow his hair or how to perform scalp massage, click the videos on the screen now.